So this uh, kind of informally begins the next four months of my training cycle. I signed up for my main race that I wanted to do. I'm gonna do the Conquer the Wall 47 hour endurance challenge in Williamson, West Virginia. But this is way different. This is 47 hours. <coughs> Reason I don't do 48 is because it's on the time zone change. So you spring forward the weekend of the race, March 11th. It starts Friday at 7 p.m. and you run till Sunday, 7 p.m., 47 hours. All right, <clears throat> as it gets colder, it's a lot more important to warm up. All the muscles just want to lock up as soon as you walk outside the door. Right. I don't know where brick qualifies on the uh, hardness scale of, you know, materials that you can run on, but I've got a lot of brick streets near my house. So, I'm gonna look that up later with this 47 hour endurance challenge. It's gonna be quite a bit different from anything I've done before. All of my training has really been about trail 100s, you know, lots of elevation this last year. One of the biggest differences is gonna be that it's all flat. There's no set distance, and it's all on a two mile concrete loop. So there are benefits to that, and there are big disadvantages as well. One benefit, you go at your own pace. There's no cutoff. There's no finish line. There's no distance you have to be at. Another big advantage, there's no hills, so the effort can be executed consistently and evenly. Another advantage is that because the loops are only two miles, you don't have to carry anything on you. I'm not carrying anything right now. Normally, on a Saturday long run, I'd be going out for anywhere from like 15 to 20 and I might schedule one stop at my car, but for the most part, I carry everything I need on me, you know, so. With this, I'll be lightweight. And I think another advantage is gonna be the ability to see people and start to like form conversations and relationships with them, suffer with them, as opposed to, being out there all alone by yourself. So, I'm looking forward to that. So let's talk briefly about disadvantages of an endurance challenge over a 100 mile ultra. Well, with a 100 mile ultra, you've got beauty, scenery all around you. In this endurance challenge, I'm gonna be on a two mile concrete path, <laughs> basically hugging a flood wall the entire time. <laughs> Another disadvantage, and this is a big one, the physicality required of 47 hours. And this goes for any endurance event where you're just doing one repetitive motion the entire time. There's, you know, on a trail 100, you're gonna have all the roots, the rocks, the ups, the downs. You're gonna be able to vary it up on the trail as you go, work different muscle groups, hit those ankles a little different every step. Here, I'm gonna be really thinking hard about repetitive overuse injuries that could come up. And that's just something it's gonna be a really big part of my training. 
Another disadvantage of this format is the fact that you are running the same loop over and over and over. And every single time you hit two miles, so say you were 100 miles, you're gonna hit this 50 times. 50 times you're gonna see all your stuff, your tent, your sleeping bag if you have one, your food, your warmth, your shelter, your family, your friends. You're gonna wanna stop at some point and rest. Cloud Spinner took me 31 and a half. So, some new territory will be from 31 and a half to 47. Am I gonna get tired? Am I gonna get sleepy? Am I gonna get so cold that I don't know what to do? You know, what's that extra 15 and a half hours gonna feel like? Especially with the monotony of this loop. Coal barge floating down the Ohio River. I said the physicality of the event is an issue, but also the mental aspect of this race is huge. The mental aspect, you've gotta be, you gotta be tough to keep going, to not stop. I haven't, I haven't thought too much about my run walk strategy. Probably need to. I know there's a couple different ways that you can structure that. One of the popular ones I saw was running for 20 or 25 minutes and walking for five minutes and then repeating that as long as you can. I like the idea of that, but that's kind of my goal is to find what is that all day pace. And does that all day pace require some walking and how frequently and in what interval will that walking need to happen? That's one of the fun things about this training block is it's not about the miles, it's about the time. The longer I spend on the feet, the more prepared I am. As the, that time on feet doesn't have to be running, it doesn't have to be walking. Anything, just standing on your feet is gonna get me better prepared for this race. And I'm, I'm excited about that. The other thing I'm kind of thinking about is nutrition. So, for the river, nutrition did not go well for me. I probably didn't eat anything for 40 miles of anything of substance, you know. My body definitely slipped into a state of ketosis. I slowed down tremendously. That was a big learning experience for me. Did not have that at Cloud Splitter. Cloud Splitter was great on nutrition. I pretty much stuck to my schedule of eating something that had about 100, 100 calories every three miles. Eat something like a gel or a honey every three miles. Didn't matter if that three miles took an hour or half an hour, that was the plan. And then I supplemented that with some snacks from the aid stations and Tailwind and they had heed. All in all, I think I probably got in 5,000 calories, but the good thing was I was able to continually eat the entire race, all 31 and a half hours. Something was going in my body every single hour. I think with this endurance event, 47 hours, the challenge is gonna be, how do I eat hour after hour after hour without stopping, to rest for any prolonged amount of time. Now there's plenty of walking. I think that's what helped at Cloud Splitter was I would take walking breaks as needed because when you're doing that, your stomach is allowed to settle a little bit. When you're running, all that blood pushes away from your stomach into your extremities, keep you warm, keep you moving, keep the blood flowing throughout your body to your muscles away from your stomach. With a run-walk strategy, 
in something like this, um, I should be able to kind of really dial that in. The terrain will not dictate when I walk like it did at Cloud Splitter. So I will dictate that. Now that, that in itself is a challenge because if I am dictating when to walk, um, at some point, my mental faculties are gonna go out the window because I'm gonna start walking and I'm gonna wanna keep walking. So I've got to have the mental strength to say it's time to run again. So maybe like, <laughs> you get like a dog whistle or something, like something to like subconsciously train me that, hey, it's time to go, it's time to go, let's go, time to go. So we'll see. That's just something I'm gonna have to train and think about a lot. But benefit, I can have all my food displayed on a table. I can also have lots of hot broth ready in a thermos. And the aid station, which is the one aid station that the race supports, they'll have some hot stuff as well. Real food and that kind of stuff. So that'd be good. Yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say. I think it's gonna be a good training block. I'm excited about it. Uh, felt good. I was only gonna do 12 or 14 miles. I ended up doing 18. It's kind of nice not having a set training plan, at least for a little while. Oh, that's a wrap. <laughs>